Welcome to this week's One Image My Edis. So this week I am going to be showing you how to cut out hair. So this was requested um, by a couple of my VIP members. So hence that's why I'm doing it. Now um, I'm going to actually show you two different techniques. The first one is using Photoshop's AI, um, so the artificial intelligence. Um, and you can do quite a good job with that. Um, so I'm going to show you that just for ease. Um, you know, if you're new to Photoshop or you're not that confident with Photoshop, then you can use that technique. The other technique is a little bit more complex. It's still fairly straightforward, um, but it's something that you can use, um, you know, for images that maybe potentially have uh, a more complicated background um, and a lot more detail in the sort of hair or fur. So, you, you know, you can use this for animals. You can use this for anything really that's got hair, fur, anything like that. So before I crack on, if you follow this link here down below, okay, um, you can get a text message update every time that I go live. Um, you only need to sign up once um, and I will then text you every time that I'm doing one of these tutorials or another tutorial uh, any training that i do uh, and you can reply stop as well so you know if you get bored of it you can press stop so follow that link and also coming up on the 18th of this month january i've got the five step blueprint to photography challenge where you spend five days with me five tasks and basically get you off auto and give you lots and lots of useful information by the end of the week you should know what you're doing with your camera so you can sign up at dslrgurichallenge.com and also don't forget to visit the website dslr.guru where you can play around with the settings that i've got on there um, you can you know find all different types of uh, camera settings of all different types of genres and there's loads of stuff in there as well uh, and these are posted up on the blog as well so, okay, I'm going to crack on with tonight's tutorial then. And the first one I'm going to do is, like I said, it's going to be using the um, the AI, so artificial intelligence. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the quick selection tool and we're going to click on that. And we're not actually going to select anything because up the top here, you can see it says select subject. So we're going to click on that. Photoshop is going to work out where the image is and it's going to make the selection for us now it has to do you know a little bit of work so there we go it's done quite a good job that it's it's worked out where the subject is now this is in fact it's not great by any means um, but it's a start and then what we're going to do is click on select a mask so this now brings you into this interface where you can uh, look at the subject and start refining it. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is click on the top here. It says refine hair. So we're not actually going to do any adjustments, really. We're going to click on the refine hair. And what that's going to do is try and refine the edges of hair for us. And we can see there it's actually done a pretty good job. Now, there's ways in which you can view your image. So if you come over to here, you can see you've got onion skin, which is what we're on at the minute. You've got marching ants. Um, you've got an overlay. You've got um, on white. There you go. So you can see it on lots of different things. So it really comes down to personal preference. And you transparency here so you can see um, what's actually happening there with the whole of the image. Now, what you can do if you're, especially if you're um, photographing animals, you can push this radius up now we tend not to push this up when we're um, doing this for portraits because it can actually blur um, or soften the edges of the skin and i'll show you what i mean if we if we push this up what it will actually do is help the edges here and it'll actually start picking up um, some of the you know really smaller areas and you know you don't be afraid to really crank this up if it's an animal because it will it will really help and as i push this you can see it's actually doing quite a good job it's starting to pick up all the details around here and if i zoom in just by pressing control and plus and then using space to get the hat you can see there's 
it's done a real job but you can see it's starting to creep into the side of the skin can you see that so you can see these transparency areas here and that's what we want because that's telling us that it's picking out um you know the sides and uh, all the straggly bits of hair so that there is literally the easiest way to cut out hair okay so all we've done is clicked buttons and move the slider so if i just come down to here if i scroll down um we can decide how we want to output this so we can <laughs> i've just made a complete mess of that haven't i um let me bring that down um if we can change the the output selection so we can decide if we want this just as a layer um as a layer mask it's entirely up to us and it says here the output selection so if we click on that we can say uh, say new layer with layer mask and press OK. And there we go, that's the cutout. That's pretty much, um, you know, the artificial intelligent way of cutting someone out. Um, and what we could do as well is come down to the, down here, look, you can see we've got the create new fill or adjustment layer. If we click on that, select solid color, and let's select white and just say OK. We can then drag this down underneath and there we go we've got quite a good cutout and that's not bad considering all we've done is pressed three or four buttons okay so use that technique if you're fairly new to photoshop and you just want to get around and do something quite quick it's not bad but just be aware that the more complex a background is the harder it is to do this okay so if you're taking pictures try and you know if you're thinking that you may cut something out try and um, make sure that you're shooting on a uh, on a background that isn't over overly complex okay so i'm going to delete these just get rid of them and we've got our original image so i'm going to show you the second option or second technique and this one is a little bit more complex but it's a lot more precise okay so the first thing we're going to do is come up to our channels so we're going to click on there and if you can't see them, just go to window and you can see there's channels there. Okay. Now what we've got is RGB, so red, green, and blue. Okay, the colors that make up the image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find a shade that offers us the the the, the most contrast from the hair to the background. And if you look on the red there, that's quite flat. The, the the skin tones here kind of match the the background um it's very rare that it's a red okay it's a green or a blue so i would say obviously looking at that the blue has the highest contrast ratio between the background and the hair and the model so we're going to go with that now what we need to do is duplicate this so we're going to click on it drag it all the way down to the bottom here where this plus sign is and let go and you can see there it says blue copy okay now what we're going to do now is take this selection and we're going to darken it so we need to add a levels adjustment but we don't want to do it if we come to the laser we don't want to do it using this okay because this this will add um, a, a layer adjustment to our layers and we don't want that we want to add the adjustment just to this copy that we've made so you can use uh, control or command l for levels or you can go to image adjustment and levels and now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the blacks so we're going to start darkening this and what we're trying to do is actually make this darker so that it then becomes a selection okay so we're going to push that black right in and we don't want to go all the way to sort of there okay obvious reasons we're overcooking it well i think you know it's around there and we we're, we're looking for these scraggly bits of hair here because these are what what's difficult to select by doing this by darkening it we're actually um you know separating this from the background and we can if we want to increase the white um just to make that a little bit more contrasty um but 
we've also got to be aware that this may be then selected as white which it will be so we'll have to do some treatment on that afterwards so i reckon it's about about there that's that's quite good okay so we're going to say okay to that now what we're going to do is we're going to hit control or command and we're going to click on the blue copy area and you can see there that the marching ants have appeared can you see okay so let's go back to the gb channel and we can see there there's our selection so now what we need to do is go to the layers okay and we're going to create a layer mask so we're going to come down to the bottom here and click on the layer there we go now at the minute we've selected the background okay so this part here so what we need to do is invert that so we just press Control or command i and that will invert the solution and there we go we can see that we're to get there and there you can see on the skin there's you know some treatment that we need to do because um it's selected white because it was the same color as the background so this may happen to you especially if you've got a complex background okay um, but the darker you make it and you can also adjust the grays as well if you want to but sometimes you're going to have this okay we can deal with it it's fairly easy so once we've done that let's select our brush tool so you can either press b on the keyboard or come down to here look where it says brush tool and up here on this li little arrow that clicks down we can select whatever brush you want now i'm going to actually select a, a hard brush i'm going to keep opacity full and flow full and what i'm going to do is change that to white so command z just to do that so white and then start painting this back in so now what we're doing is we're painting back the bits we want to keep another way that you can um, do this is by holding the alt key down and clicking on the layer mask and you can see here that there's her hand okay so we can literally just say okay well let's just paint that back in so we can do it um i think that's a little bit of hair there so we can do that and really look at the selection and see what we've got so click alt again back on there and it will bring it back so we now know 100 percent that we've got everything in here okay and you can switch between the two just to double check that you've got it okay and if you make a mistake you can just switch it back to black obviously that will erase everything okay um so once you've done that it's a case of now thinking right okay let's have a look what else can we do well the like i said the obvious thing is to come down to here and add a solid color so most people want to add uh, a solid color to the background so you just click on that solid color select whatever color you want and then we're going to have to do this underneath like we did in the first one so that we have got a selection and we can see there that actually doing that way is really really size you can see that we've got these strands of hair here now usually they're difficult to get you can see all this detail and this is what makes a difference between an image looking bulky when you cut it out or uh, like like it was like natural here so all of this is a cutout and that is just due playing with the channels and darkening this hair area and making that selection so that we can separate it from whatever background we're using this is probably you know the best way you can do it uh, in my opinion um and it, it takes a while used to but it's it's not the end of the world it's not totally, totally impossible to do so i'm just going to quickly um just get rid of them because i want to show you um something oh sorry i just want to show you something else as well um sorry one second i'm just going to go back to my history and just bring it back to the original state there we go um so earlier when i said if you click on the refine sorry the quick selection tool there and you click on select subject okay now there's another step that you can do within this um, which really really helps and enables you to make a better selection so then we click on select a mask so this is the first attempt that i showed you now when you come into this panel i did say that you can click on refine hair which is really really good 
Um, it does a really good job. It's like I said, it's Photoshop's AI. But what we've got here is some tools. The second one down is the Refine Edge tool. Now, that will help us define the edges of these hair areas here, and it will help us. But the trick with this, okay, is to click inside the hair and then drag out, okay? Because what it's doing is sampling area and then deciding what to keep. So I'm just letting go. So I've just clicked in the middle, pulled and dragged, and it's given me quite a good selection. So again, click, drag out, and I can then come around the areas here and these bits here all these straggly bits so you can add this to um, the process of the first one which is using photoshop's ai so all i'm doing is holding the button and drag on there and it's sampling the hair and it's kind of working out okay this is what you want so we're kind of whipping it we're certainly helping it so we can see there's a bit missed out at the air so let's have a see and have a look see what it does so we can always go back over it and we can always click further in and then out as well. And that will just give Photoshop more to work with. You can also do that as well. And that helps the process. But if you want a really good process way of cutting out, I would suggest you follow the second option, which is to use the channel selection. That is um, a more advanced way of doing it. So I hope that's helped you. Please post up your images. Let me see what you've been doing. Um, this should help you. Like I said, we've not just with portraits of, of, of hair. It can also be used for um, animals, fur, things like that. Um, so that will give you a much, much better way of cutting out hair. So I've really enjoyed doing that this week. And thanks to um, Bear Van Robin in the VRP group for asking this because it gave me a really good idea. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that I could share this technique with you all um, because it can really, really help. Um, so like I said at the beginning, don't forget that you can join the next Five Step Blueprint to Photography Challenge. That starts on the 18th of January. It's really, really good. We've got quite a few people signed up for that already. So come and join that. It's absolutely free. You join. We start on a Monday and we work all the way through to a Friday. You can do this while you're working. It'll only take 15, 20 minutes a day. And I do live Q&As in the evening. But you'll learn absolutely loads of this. So come and get yourself signed up for there. If you want to get registered for every time that I do any live training, then just follow this link here and type in um, uh, follow and you will receive a text message every time that I go live. And also, don't forget, go over to dslr.guru and you can look at the settings section on there, which will help you with your camera settings. Uh, and also the blog. There's loads of other bits and bobs on there. So go and check it out and have a look. So I hope that's helped. And I will see you all very soon. Stay safe. Keep taking pictures and keep editing. Bye-bye.